morning. This is Rev Trev. Friends, yesterday we saw um, how Jesus rebuked Peter, said to him, get behind me. And now we find, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. And so the Lord doesn't just rebuke Peter and leave it there. He then calls the disciples to himself and he shares not only with Peter but with the disciples what the cost is of following Jesus. What it means to have true salvation. Um, we find that the other gospel writers tell us that Jesus did not just share this with his disciples. But he shared this also with the crowds. If Jesus only shared this with his disciples... Then people would be able to say, well, there's a different standard for ministers or for elders or for deacons. But we find that Jesus doesn't only share it with his disciples, but he shares it with everyone. He says, if you want to follow me, if you want salvation, then this is how you are to live your life. Whoever wants to. Here we find straight away, friends, Jesus does not force us to follow him. He has not made us robots. He gives us the choice. Other versions say anyone who desires. You see, you have to have a desire. It's the desire to want to follow Jesus that leads to us following him. But many people don't have a desire to follow Jesus. They don't want to follow his standards. They don't want to live according to his standards. That's why they have no desire to follow him and that's why Jesus says anyone who wants to follow me this is how they are to live many people today think they are saved because they've said a prayer Lord Jesus come into my heart and now they think they have a free pass into heaven and a get out of jail card out of hell I want to tell you today that someone who becomes a follower of Jesus. You see the Lord calls us. We only are saved because the, it's God that brings us to that place. Where we see we need a savior. And Jesus says when that happens. It's not just a prayer. Now that we're going to follow him. He says anyone who wants to follow him. Must deny themselves. And that word deny themselves. Means whatever rights I had. I no longer I have. I've transferred my rights and I've given it to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus denied himself. He died on the cross. He said, Father, not my will be done, but your will be done. This word deny themselves. Peter denied Jesus three times. He says, I don't know this man. I don't know anything. I'm not one of these. Well, Jesus says we need to deny ourselves. That's the meaning of this word. You see, some people think the word deny means, well, I won't eat chocolate um, or sugar for the next two weeks. That is denying something for yourself. But you need to deny self. That's a completely different thing. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6.20, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. And so denying self is saying, it's no, longer, it's no longer my rights. My life is now God's. Then the second thing is take up your cross. And the cross speaks about death. The cross speaks about dying to self. Friends, when we want, all of us want to receive a crown one day when we get to heaven. But you have to have carried your cross here on earth to receive your crown in heaven. Some say, why must we pick up a cross when Jesus died on the cross? He paid the price. Why must we suffer anyway? You see, some people just want the gospel. Come to Jesus and all your problems are over. No, no, no. Each one of us have a cross to bear. And this is not a once-off thing. The other gospel writers tell us that we are to pick up our cross daily. 
And so we find here, friends, this picking up the cross does not mean that we all have to die. Eleven of the twelve disciples died for Jesus. The only one that didn't die was John. But he wrote the book of Revelation. And he saw the end. Yet he died as a prisoner. Some people say, I carry a cross. My cross is my husband. Now, yours might be sickness or pain. Now, carrying the cross doesn't mean that at all. It means walking in the ways of Jesus. Romans 12 verse 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is true and proper worship. And then the, after that he says, follow me. There's a song that says, I will follow him, follow him wherever he may go. That's what we are called to do. Wherever the Lord leads, we will follow. Frank Sinatra said, I did it my way. And my way is the highway, it's the broad way, it's the wrong way, it's the way that leads to death. Some people say, I want to give my life to the Lord, but I'm going to do my own thing. That's not what the Bible speaks about. When we come to the Lord, we give up our rights, we follow Him in the way that He leads us. The word means to walk the same road as someone else. And we are to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. It's like when you walk in the beach and you see someone's footstep, you follow in those ones. That's literally what this means. Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified with Christ. No longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life up for me. This is this is what this verse means about following Christ. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. And it almost seems like a contradiction. Because at the end, friend, if we try to save our lives by living in our own ways or denying Christ, we will lose our lives at the end. But if we lose our lives here on earth, this is absent from the body, present with the Lord. What good is it if someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in exchange for his soul? There are people today that are so rich they could live multiple lifetimes. They have enough money to live in wealth, never to lack anything. They could live multiple lifetimes. They will never run out of money. There are people that control, can control so many things on earth because of the money they have. Politicians, bankers, yet they cannot control God because salvation cannot be bought. They will leave this world naked just like they came into this world naked. And so Jesus says a man can have can, and literally own this whole world, but he will lose his soul. And what's the value of living on this earth for 80 years maybe with no problems and facing an eternity without God. For the Son of Man is going to come in His Father's glory with His angels and then He will reward each one according to what they have done. You see, such a person has no riches in heaven. When God comes, what will their reward be? absolutely nothing. The question you and me need to answer this morning is, what will our reward be? How many people have we led to the Lord? Because Jesus is coming back with his rewards. When he opens the book on your life and my life, what rewards will we have? You need to answer the question just like me. How many people have you led to the Lord? How much um, wealth and have you plowed into the kingdom of heaven? Or is all your wealth and everything you own into things of this earth? Because when you stand before the Lord, He's not interested if you have one or ten cars. If you have two or three houses, He's going to ask you the question, What have you done for the kingdom of God? I pray this morning, friends, 
that as you hear this, you are able to take stock of your life and say, am I just living for this world or am I living for the kingdom of God? Because Jesus is truly, I tell you, some of you standing here will not taste death before the Son of Man comes in his kingdom. And we're going to find that Peter, James and John receive a sneak preview of his coming on the Mount of Transfiguration that we're going to see tomorrow. God, this is Rev Trev. I pray that God blesses you today.